if there were not love between two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, if there was not a desire for cooperation, a desire for union, then there would be no water. And so when you look out here in nature, everything that you can see in physical form is the result of a congregation of atoms or molecules who desire to congregate, to cooperate, to create whatever it is in front of eyes that is beautiful to see. Everything has its place and everything contributes to the whole. So we come to this idea of water being this amazing substance which is created fundamentally out of love. It's created out of the love for oxygen, for hydrogen. It's created out of the love of mother substances which are carbons and minerals and all those trace elements all combine in water to produce this life elixir which if it is high quality will endow us with extraordinary energy and longevity. So how do we get back to this water? What does this wonderful substance do for us? How can we treat it? How can we store it? Well, water, juvenile water, young water is born in the forest and as it gradually comes to the surface it gathers to itself minerals, trace elements until arriving at the surface as a spring it is mature. It has its full complement of mother substances. It's ready to give and one of the principal ingredients in good water is carbonic acid which is a compound of hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. And when you put a glass of very good quality water out in the sun and you let it stand in the sun, then eventually you'll see some little bubbles form on the inside of the glass as the water heats up. And that is the conversion of carbonic acid into carbon dioxide. And all these little bubbles coming out represent the carbon dioxide coming out of the water represent the body of the water, the good taste of the water coming out of it. And it also represents an enormous energy loss. And so many of our systems of reticulation today are designed merely from the point of view that water is a fluid, that it has no life, and so it doesn't matter which way you treat it. So we make it flow down straight channels, we make it flow into cylindrical objects, we make it flow into all sorts of vessels and shapes which are nowhere to be found in nature and we don't perceive even with so many spiral formations and spiral movements around us, I mean in terms of the spiral motion of the galaxies, in terms of the spiral movement of cyclones, tornadoes and so on. All these spirals are there everywhere and we don't see that nature has chosen these shapes because they represent those artifacts, those formations which follow her laws of constant change. Because the only thing which is constant in nature is change. And if we want to create a system for water reticulation, then we must also create within the forms that we provide the possibility for water to change and transform and to renew itself. Victor Schauberger, born in Austria in 1885, was descended from a long line of foresters and conservators of the forest and in his blood he therefore had an enormous amount of information inherited so to speak genetically from his forebears and the family motto was have faith in the silent forest. He as a young man spent most of his time in the forest and there he was able to perceive phenomena, energetic phenomena in nature in untouched virgin forest which gave him so many insights into 
the way nature functioned and particularly with regard to water. He says that he used to sit beside a flowing stream and was never bored for a minute. He used to allow a part of his consciousness to flow away with the water and when it was returned to him finally the water psyche revealed many secrets to him so in a sense he was able to send his consciousness to those places the eyes couldn't see and in returning with information it confirmed or further developed the theories that he had on water. Throughout his whole life he was an unconventional person in terms of contemporary physics or science and he had a long and running battle with scientists, often acrimonious, because those things that he said were the realities were usually in stark conflict with accepted theory at the time. And fundamentally this revolves around water and the way water should be viewed and what is important for water to maintain its inner health and vitality. Now what is water? Well, water in Victor Schauberger's view is a living substance. And whether it has life or death depends on the way it's been treated, what it's handled, how it's forced to flow or how it flows, under what conditions it flows. And all these things Victor Schauberger perceived in his long sojourn in the forest in Austria when he was a young forester and he had access to phenomena, energetic phenomena, which nobody else had. And indeed in, in 1930 he wrote a book called Our Senseless Toil which laid out clearly for everyone to see all the environmental catastrophes that would happen and which would be inevitable if humanity did not change the way it had dealt with water, treated water and the forest as well because the forest and water are so closely interconnected. You remove the forest, you remove the water at the same time. You destroy the forest, you destroy the water because instead of flowing in coolness under the shade of trees, which is the way nature ordains for water to flow, it flows out in the sunlight and loses its energy. One of the great elements, the factors in water, which Victor was able to put his finger on, was that of temperature. When we are healthy, we say we haven't got a temperature. And water hasn't got a temperature when its temperature is four degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water is at its most dense. It has its highest energy content. It has its greatest life-giving potential at that temperature. And when the temperature increases above four degrees or below four degrees, then water gets less dense. And this anomaly point of water, and it's anomalous because all other liquids become consistently denser with cooling, water is the only liquid which stops getting denser at four degrees and starts getting less dense below that. Oxygen is always present at all processes of growth and decay and in water which sphere it is active in depends on the water temperature. The critical temperature phase between one and the other is according to Victor Schauberger about nine degrees centigrade. Victor saw a completely different view of phenomena. The water as a living substance but the water itself was a transformer and receiver and emitter. It transformed the energies of the cosmos and the energies of the earth. And in this area, we also have to differentiate between the forces from the cosmos, which Victor viewed as being male, and the forces of the earth, which were female. And water was what he called the first substance, the first born. And it was born through the interaction of the elements of the earth and the cosmos and more particularly the sun and it was the sun's fertilizing influence on water through oxygen which 
in Victor's view, was a lower form of solar radiation, which created the marvel that is water, or made out of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in that combination. So, coming back to this operation of oxygen in water and how it functions in water, it is the inseminator in both cases of growth and decay but when it's in a beneficial mode, then it is at a temperature below 9 degrees, the carbon substances or the carbons of the earth, which Victor grouped all together as under the name mother substances, these were every element except for oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen was the carrier substance, oxygen was male and fertilizing, and all the other substances were female. And if you think of the word material itself, it has its origins in the Latin word mater, which means mother. And so perhaps if we think of it in this way, then you get an idea of what mother substances mean. And when oxygen is bound or is fertilized under cool conditions, then the female part of the interaction surrounds the oxygen, which is passive. And then the energies are transferred in such a way, or transformed in such a way, as to provide creative, growing, beneficial things. And this is the interaction of oxygen and the mother substances below 9 degrees. Once the temperature goes above 9 degrees, then the oxygen becomes aggressive and it binds the mother substances that it, it surrounds the mother substances who then become passive and in that situation parasitic and bacterial life forms evolve when we approach a new way of designing or a new way of looking at moving water for instance then we have to design a process which allows water to change and to transform and to move and to be itself fundamentally to be itself In the reticulation of water for drinking purposes, it's important to generate the